play off then I don't know if he's played four, but definitely five. So as we see him now. Oh, he started his position four. Interesting. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, that's true. I do find the the Don, I mean, last season really impressed me as a four, right? So I'm really happy to see him back there again. I'm hoping that we actually get to see his Blockrock again, which is a hero that has not really been seeing the meta, unfortunately, but it was something that really stood out to me with, um, with the last iteration of IPG. And we used to joke that Ladon was just a Clockwork player. Actually, not seeing such a huge advantage yet by the tiny. Usually, it's in the early levels where he gets an advantage to his sheer attack power. But the puck has managed to hold his own, which is not bad. And that has uh, allowed the puck to also get the runes early. He has, he has a nice little mobility and he uses the runes a little bit better because tiny usually cannot burst you down. Uh, and I mean, that's what you're looking for in Fantastic Five. As long as you get your puck to a decent start, the Underlord and Bloodseeker should be good enough with the Enuma, especially if, if he goes for points and Midnight Pulls, deal with his Tiny's early ganking. You don't have to be worried about the Blink Dagger timing, so you want to slow it down as much as possible. Maybe you want to gank him a little bit early, but Tiny is not an easy hero to gank in the mid lane, unless you bring both supports in, because you need a whole bunch of damage. And unfortunately, Puck does not bring that much physical damage early on, which Tiny well, is the only thing you can kill him with. Yeah. Uh, nice little kill they get there. And Empire already off to a good start, honestly. 1k lead. Now Tiny really is starting to pull off. And Magnus is doing really well for himself as well in this top lane. I mean, this matchup between Magnus Bloodseeker, not as bad as it's looking like right now. It's just the Magnus doing a really good job at lasting against him. Even It didn't even go for the points in Empower, which is surprising. Because Bloodseeker actually does have a bigger base damage. But regardless of that, uh, it doesn't stop Petushara from just crushing him in the lane. And the other lord is cannot say he's doing as well against Smiling Knight, who has a decent amount of last hits. Supernova really struggling to go against them. Oh, that was close. Really interesting choice to go for the helper, like the potato, not the tomato, right? I'm really sure, because the Enchanter has no limit on the uh, on the creeps, so maybe she didn't find any better creeps, I don't know. I think it was a better creep, maybe you could have gotten the kill there, because uh, potato is just not that great. The aura is nice, it used to be better when it's stacked, and now it's eh. No, skewer, top. Ah, nah, he's fine. Yeah, but for the enemy team, I hope he's not stacking. There you go. Like, it is Magnus people talking about. They're going to be able to take stacks much before you. 
Don't stack there. There's the enemy triangle. Kind of a waste of time for 63. And considering your Bloodseeker was struggling, it's not ideal to do this. I mean, now he's given Rari complete control for the lane. The nice little experience has boosted him back up. But you're seeing that Empire starting to play a bit more aggressive. We still have the skewer here. Is he going to do it? He's not. But Tushar decides, eh, Rari is not going to die again. We could do a bit more harassment, but rather keep my mana up and going. And here you can see what I was talking about in the draft about the Magnus being played more around team fight with the fact that we're seeing Magnus's go for the arcane boots all the time now. In the top lane, we do hear a rupture against uh, Petushara, but I don't think that's gonna... Oh, okay, never mind that. That's gonna be enough to at least deter them. In fact, Puck comes in, the skewer is just gonna destroy Petushara. And now with a Dream Coil, am I able to kill Petushara? But at the same time, the Puck is in trouble. If you'll fair damage, here comes the Bloodseeker. Askel trying to get away, and he will barely survive. And Petushara will die in... Oh, never mind. The press kid does get him with the Avalanche. That nerf to the face shift, or the fact that he didn't use it there, really hurt him. Yep. Of course, of course. Still rupture. Bounty. I hate when that happens. Your pl your plastic bag breaks and you're like, oh no. Is it tomato soup or my appendix? In this case, Petushara got it wrong. And unfortunately, that did... Like, he did it twice as well with the drink call, too. Like, he almost calculated duration perfectly, but was just shy, and that killed him both times, so... With that, uh, calculations, Rari, the target. We still have the skewer play. There we go. Little skewer play. We have Avalanche thought as well. Blood right to deter this initiation, but he got the toss off on the Bloodseeker with the Hex. Can they turn this into a kill? They have a tree toss still. If they want to throw it, they don't even need to. The press kit gets him with the extra range the tree toss provides, and that's going to be Rari going down yet again. More kills for Empire and a successful game for now for the Tiny. I mean, I, I was telling you this, right? Clearly a bit of a comfort pick here for the Dyer's top tower. Yeah, have a toss again. Oh no! <laughs> I was like, go, attack dog, go, save me! <laughs> and the courier just walks in, dies. Ladon happy that he gets to still breathe. But he's only level three now. I mean, the support has struggled because he hasn't been able to find ganks. Instead, he's been more protecting his team. Comparing him to the five, who's level five, you know, this this four is struggling. Vanscore is also level five himself. The light is almost level five right now. Just got it. So we are seeing the Earth Spirit not going to be as useful early and since they can't really put any aggression that's uh, making a fantastic five struggle at getting kills supernova wrong side of the map dude that's not where you're supposed to be he's walking towards the enemy tier one got absolutely punished by the avatar combo yet again oh no not the sit play again what is 63 doing <laughs> what? <laughs> He's struggling. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. That 63 play but was odd to say the least. Uh I don't I think he was trying to create space for Bloodseeker to take a stack, maybe, but the enchanter is not gonna steal the stack away from you, right? So I don't really understand what that space meant. And also 
better than walking towards the Enchantress. Maybe that thing there are other options. I don't know if you can juke into trees or something. It, it was almost kind of a suicide. But now he's gonna recover with a little Malifus kill here on the Prescott. I hope he's hoping to do so. In fact, Finger of Death stops this initiation. Goodbye to Ladon. Turns into a Jade statue, crumbles immediately, and doesn't seem like Fantastic Five will be able to follow this up with anything. So, just more death in the wake of Fantastic Five. Only a rupture? There's Black Hole. Oh! I mean, I think they heard us say, like, yes, he got Black Hole, okay, we gotta we got kill him, RP Toss. You know, you committed quite a lot for position 5, but it is the security that it gives you that now you know there's no potential to for them to counter-initiate. And as you mentioned, or we keep mentioning, Earth Sprint is not really gonna help you out too much. In the bottom lane, yeah. That's Reincarnation as well. Middle tower is under attack. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure why he leveled the reincarnation. I mean, usually you keep the point in, right? And if you level it, and especially your team did not make a, even a modicum of effort to come and help you. And Chandra's TP to the tower and immediately left as well. So there was not really an idea from Empire to try to fight that. Why have reincarnation level one? Now that's on cooldown. It might be on cooldown by the time you get your level 12, which is huge for the Wraith King, because that's when reincarnation becomes a more viable the skill. And you could have just put it a point into like Empiric Spirit, which is better for farming. I'm actually surprised as well that he didn't. It. Usually, this build Mortal Strike means that you want to fight early. We have seen no intention from the Wraith King to do so. I mean, small things, right? And you are giving uh, the Bloodseeker, who has just an incredible farming speed, a chance to come back into the game. And he is almost matching your Wraith King, who has a Magnus in his team. So that's Radiant's not looking too great for Empire, especially considering attack. the early game lead you had. Radiant are scanning. Yeah. Has blink. Yeah, he always rushes the Blink over the Ethelens build that used to be popular last patch, just because uh, Blink gives you the option to counter the pocket. We said, oh, some pucks don't mind the Hex. This puck has been minding the Hex for sure this game. It's been a really strong tool. 633, again, the target. Blood Rite will not help him. And he's just going to fall. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Not bad. Yeah? Yes. Raking is just one for him to join fights, which is okay, but the one on Tiny and Lion definitely get you easy kills. That's why they kill the Lion, to make sure that that can't happen, but that, that's going to not delay the Blink Tiger because he bought it before he died, so no gold lost. Not really that big a kill anyway because of that, and now you might be able to defend this tower, honestly. If Lion can come back in time, Tiny One might want to initiate the catch Enchanters, Fast Gordon Trouble, there's the Blood Rite, Dream Call out the two, pretty good, but Avatos, not enough to kill the Don, and Vanscore seems to take this nicely, how Magnus, not as well. 
well. Petushara will die. That rupture aiding in his death. And that's going to be maybe the tower falling. It's kind of difficult to fight this now. Rating is DP though. Okay. He has reincarnation available. They go for the Unknown first. Take away the taxi. And there's no way for them to retreat unless they walk away. And they seem unable to do so. At least Ladon will have to fall here. 6 3 3. He still has Black Hole. I don't know if you want to fight this. He gets a three man Black Hole. And they can kill the Lion in time. But well, the reincarnation is still available. So they can't really follow this up too much. Smiley Light with the armlet actually missed toggles and will die to the puck. Only his first life. But still unnecessary death. That's gonna be still a four-man wipe for an Empire. Only Bloodseeker surviving. Successful play. Kind of a misplay there to come back in with a black hole. You get excited, and it really wasn't that great. Dire structures are fortified. are scanning. I just want to go back in here. Uh, Fantastic Five trying to put pressure here before the... I mean, they don't have Black Hole up though, so I'm, I'm questioning, right? The RP is available. It seems like Empire will still have a chance here to fight this. Radiance middle tower oh, okay, so... Fallen. It seems like they want to just take the tower quickly because they thought they could at least put some pr uh, like threat, knowing the ranking is not with them, and then just retreat. They have no intention of continuing this fight. As they know, they're just at a disadvantage here in the fight. I mean, Dreamcoil is fine, but RP is a bit better. And every time you have Avatos available, Tiny is a one-man killing machine. You can really easily burst out the Enigma or the Earth Spirit. Perhaps even the Puck if he gets him in a nice little Avatos with, like, a Hex. Oh, and here we might... No. Oh, also that. Yep. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yes. There we go, Avalanche Toss onto the two supports, that's amazing. With the Earth Spike on top of that, they guarantee double kill. And that's your, I mean, a big source of your team fight kind of gone, right? Earth Spirit and Enigma are, are honestly really important initiators here because the Dream Coil and the Pit of Malice are nice, but it just keeps him in an area. You need these stuns to really be able to, for Bloodseeker to come in, especially before he gets his Blink Dagger. He has decided to go for Sanjay Yasha before that, but he's gonna slow down the Blink Dagger, and that means you, you need those stuns and silences to come out to make sure that he is a bit more secure. Perhaps he considers the BKB not, sorry, not Blink Dagger, BKB. He considers the B, BKB not as important because the Magnus exists and he can always stop you regardless. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the Avatars and the Lion's existence is very annoying regardless. Though. It's true. 
he mostly considers his own power spikes and forgets to take into account what the enemy team does to those power spikes. And in this case, the existence of a lion makes it so you cutting lanes is not as easy. Supernova walking into the pit, and they're like, okay, sure, dude, I'll kill you. You wanna die? You wanna die? BKB activated by Smiling Knight, and Supernova is not having this. Look at that Zoro Crest power up so good with Petushan, and even catches with the Bloodseeker as well. That's gonna be a carry die with a finger of death being committed for this. Rari is also going to fall two cores down, and now it's time for the support to die as well. The Skewer catches the Dawn, slows him down, he tries to roll in Boulder to safety, and he will be able to make it. Sayu thinking with a Blink Dagger, but not wanting to commit. It's better to just go and finish up the Roshan here. Or other farm, I guess? There we go. RP, by the way. Oh, I was gonna say, he has our people to try. He doesn't want to commit to it. He's like, sure. You want to live Enigma? I'll let you live. You, you don't have Black Hole. You're pretty much useless. You're a five Enigma. Good luck. A B? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, it, it's just not very... It, it's been a lot of uh, misplays. I think they, they think that... I don't know, I feel like the Lion and the and the Tiny's counter-initiation has really screwed them over. They thought, oh, we have such great impact, our 5-on-5 five five is incredible, it's unbeatable, but 5-on-5 five five tends to be beaten by these fast spells or these constant counter-initiation. The zone out is also really good against these abilities. That's all that Empire has. And of course, the I'm a bit... I mean, it's, it's weird that they went for a teamfight lineup against heroes like Wraith King, who is... Particularly the counter to these team fight lightness because he dies once and he's okay, and then all your team fights spent, and he can just come back in and kill you a second time. So. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh my God! What a combo! <laughs> The thing is, Fantastic Five's uh, lineup might be able to scale better into the late game because you have Axe on Puck, you've always to deal with the BKBs, for example, so it's not... Like, it's a good lineup if this went longer, but currently, as it stands, the damage that Empire can provide, and again, the lack of BKBs on the enemy side, with Rari's finally going for one, but a bit late, is making it very easy for them to initiate. Like, nobody else besides him has even considered a BKB. We used to see last patch a lot of Puck going for BKB. This time we saw much more initiation tactics. Underlord can't really consider it, but there's no option for a pipe, not even a hood for him this game, which is surprising. Uh, he, I thought he was stunned there for a second. He has reincarnation level 3 though. Uh, he can fight this. Oh, Hex? Light? Oh no, Askel! Still playing as if there's no line in the team, but these hexes are getting him every single time. Ladon is capable of rolling, bouldering himself to safety. There is no blink dagger for eight more seconds, so they have to let him go. Not really that big a deal. I, I feel like, oh, Ray King's actually going for Define Rapier. Okay, Smiley Knight is done with this game. He's like, guys, we got this. It's super easy. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Yep, I, I find that. I mean, how, how do you even come back into this, though, uh, honestly? The, the, uh, you're, you're completely right that, that these kind of plays by the Paka are, are not the correct ones, but it's been so many times he's done this, that at this point, I don't know if you have any counterplay. Okay. Did they turn this around? Oh my goodness! Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I, 
it's not what I was saying, right? I, I feel like you've made this mistake so often that now realizing this, it's too late, right? Because the puck now, what he needs to be doing is contingency plan, which is cutting lanes, stuff like that. You can't do that against a lion, and you should have realized that you couldn't play that aggressively Dyer's against a lion much earlier, or uh, got the choice to go for Lincolns or BKB, Dyer's just on the hex, either or, right? But the fact that it took you so long to realize this, now it seems like you're a bit too far gone, Dyer's and every time you gotta commit for a kill, like the Magnus kill, Shen. you lose to here. Like, it's so easy for them to counter-initiate. Laton? No. It's... Is under attack. Dyer's courier has been killed. Target unknown. The sword arm likes to swing. Yes, yes. You don't stand in front of a truck or a vet. We've, we've experienced that. We know what that is. Very dangerous creature. So, yeah, I, I don't know. You stop him now because you you don't really have the ability. Like, your abilities are all to burst on either a single hero or... I, I guess if you could somehow save Rupture for, like, the second life... No. Kill him with Rupture the first life and save Black Hole for the second one. And then hope that maybe half a vampire disconnects. Uh, that would be an idea. That is not a European. I just want to remind you that... Exactly, and they also call us... They've called us Continentals for years, so they don't get to be part of this. Yes. Yes. Okay, my armada got destroyed by a storm and they keep claiming it was theirs. That's not fair. has been killed. Uh, oh my goodness, how much damage? That was a, a thousand damage crit? Radiance top tower is under attack. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, I know the Raper did get buffed a bit for heroes like Wraithing when you're not against evasion, right? Because he, he deals more damage and with crits, this is really nice for him. Not that much, I mean, 50 extra damage. Uh, 50 extra damage at this point in the game might be enough to sentence this. Bottom tower is under attack. Right. But Take a yeah, very close though. Take a knee, peasant, and never a better time than now to say that, because honestly, <laughs> your crits against supports, it does make them feel like a king executing a peasant here. Smiling Knight, not giving them any chance to come back, and uh, I mean, I guess you're just waiting for maybe Roche to come back to, to really fight, because oh, Orb of Destruction, you needed more damage. I, I think you just wait for the Roche, uh, probably as Empire. I, I can't imagine that you want to play too aggressively. They have a Rapier after all, so you, you might be able to lose this if Bloodseeker gets the Rapier. It is quite a nice item for Bloodseeker with his attack speed. Yeah. Uh, 
oh, my wow. wands. You'll not live to see the dawn. Elemental gold. Yeah, that... Yeah. I mean, Lion has been the bane of this Puck's existence <laughs> for the whole game. I feel like the PKB should have come much sooner. I don't know if I agreed completely with the Blink Dagger. So, I mean, like, I love Blink Dagger and Puck. But, or maybe even the Witchblade, right? You should, you should have changed one of these items for a BKB earlier, but now the cutting of lanes has to happen, so dying is just part of the job. It's just part of the job. It's okay for you to die as long as Rari is, is at least maintaining himself alive. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Oh my goodness. No, another subject for the bone king. Oh, that's pretty bad though. Wasting the uh, Dark Rift there means that you... I mean, the, like playing Roshan, it's, it's full committing. Either commit completely to Roshan and you win that team fight, or you lose the game. There's really not much else you can do here. And I feel like they're just waiting for that. There we go. The creep is just actually got to get out. Roshan is back. Roshan was shard as well. Nice little boost to a couple of the heroes. You can give them Horde Toss to the Magnus. You can get the reincarnation with the skeletons. Lion already has a magic immunity. Maybe you can get the tree grab special for the tiny so you can siege Highgard a bit better. We'll see. Ah, there's the shard for him. <laughs> Radiant are scanning. Let's see. Ah, uh, Fantastic Five. What will they do now? I mean, what, 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 do you even have a plan besides elongate as long as possible? It doesn't seem like they have an attack plan whatsoever. An Empire, they're gonna... <laughs> they're gonna push your high gun. Has Blink, though. Yeah, has Earth Spike. Bigger. Yeah? So you just... Uh, kind of offended, right? That there's Magnus doubted him that much. Top tower. I mean, yeah, destruction of the Underlord, easy kill on the Earth Spirit. Nothing stops Smiley Knight with that BKB. You just, like, your team fight's decent, but what are you gonna do? You get cut out so easily. Your heroes melt. There's nothing to save him either. Ignore the factor protection. Finally, the glyph comes out. You still have reincarnation with 40 second cooldown. Get the more strike cooldown as well now, so add it to a lot of his DPS. 633 coming in. No black hole for you. Kills before you can even respond. No need for racing to even hit him. There is a rupture on Tiny, but with an Aegis, I don't think he's too worried about this. Dyer's middle barracks. Yep. Dyer's middle barracks. I mean, not really even needed though, honestly, because Wily Knight is never gonna go down. His damage is too high. I don't know what Fantastic Five is holding on to right now. Uh, oh, Supernova. There we go. There's another kill. Earthspade walks in and he stops the Magus initiation, but Ladon by die as a result. They try to block his rolling boulder. They can't. Ascold almost fell to the tiny damage, but Empire will concentrate on the more important objectives. The Rax. Factor protection means nothing to this Rape King. It got buffed, but it's not buffed enough against Rape here.
much. But that's honestly quite easy for Team Empire. I feel like the drafts were not that uneven. I, I, I said, I don't like the proposition of the draft against the Raid King because of just the nature of the hero being good to counter this mid-game draft. But I could see how you could reset up.